uh, I, I don't know if this spot right here means anything to you, but I remember 12 years ago, I, I was around here, I guess I first spawned, and I heard you and B-Rad talking in game chat in a free-for-all game on Scrapyard. You guys love me? Well, as a friend, right? Yeah, as a friend. I don't, Raja. I really like you. I'm dead! Oh, <laughs> 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 I don't appreciate you asking my 10-year-old son about some of the questions you were asking him. <laughs> Do you ever remember lobbies being full of active microphones? Playing your favorite online games and having the chance to meet someone new every time? Have you been playing video games for a long time and realize, where the heck is everybody? I've been playing games since the early 2000s. And ever so slowly, I have realized that each and every game that I have personally played just gets less and less talkative, less social, and more relying on the friendships you already have established. I think over the past few years, almost a decade, multiplayer games have relied on being revolutionary and making their games as addicting as possible with their fluid mechanics. And I fully believe that most of these games out have some of the best gameplay I've ever seen. Although people are getting tired of what is considered the same old, same old. But what I think some modern gamers and developers fail to recognize is the social craze you got out of gaming that made online games blow up in the first place. <laughs> I'm going to flash back to the era that I grew up with. The reason behind my opinion and back to a time where most consider it to be the golden era of the video game world. I was the stereotypical Xbox player, Call of Duty holding an exclusive deal to give Xbox players first taste into extra content, Gears of War being an all out brutal and very satisfying third person game, and the franchise that is about to be the lead from my opinion, Halo. You ever wonder what's up there? Like what? Maybe someone up there was wondering what it's like here. These were the top dogs and were the video games leading the charge to grab the attention of curious people across the globe onto this gaming thing. I'm not trying to dive into the charm of each of these games and why they were satisfying, but they all shared something that sucked me in and is what made me keep playing video games to this day. You have just got your asses whooped again, man. Y'all so goddamn pussy. I am ashamed of each and every last one of anybody. Oh, Victor! Oh, no. oh, let's run! I'm fucking I'm fucking Oh, that was retarded. There is a guy. Oh, 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 I mean they were alive. A high chance of people instantly conversating the moment you join a lobby. Some random dude trying to trash talk you that made you pull out and end up in the historical 1v1 battles. Some kid getting absolutely trolled in the game. People rematching after having the sweatiest, most intense battle and talking their crap. Why does this matter? Well, it's what brings the human feeling to the game. It gives it meaning outside of story experience. Games are better when they are played and shared amongst other people. It's what made online games become more popular than single player games. Gradually, companies have become soft. Games aren't really made with that ingredient in mind anymore. Not very many of them at least. Everyone gets discouraged from even speaking because anyone could get banned for anything. And nowadays, I don't think it's no coincidence that single player games have started to become king once again. There's a reason why people are getting tired of multiplayer games, and I don't think that's because everything has already been done. The best moments of each and every match of whatever game you're playing has just become more dull and only personal to you and maybe a few friends. You can maybe capture the social essence still as a creator or a person with friends who plays any game that you will hop on, but let's face it, multiplayer games would have never have become as memorable and lasting as they did without the social craze that they all provided. Of course the game still needs to be addicting and fun to play, but the prioritized social aspects was the special ingredient that made them the best of the best. The games that would be replayed for years on end, the games that people have nostalgia for and wish they could play for the very first time again. If you don't believe me when I say online games are special because of the social elements it brought, 
Then let's dive into the current era of games. There are games out there right now proving that social mechanics encourage fun. One of the most popular social features in prominent games has been proximity voice chat. I've seen this thrown into games like Escape from Tarkov, Battlebit, Rust, Phasmophobia, Warzone, Daisy, and several more. It's not enough of a feature to carry a game socially, but it's the biggest feature I've seen implemented nowadays. And it's effective. Here, here I have present just because you're so generous. Oh shit, man. Instantly, all these games are suddenly full of amazing moments that amplify the fun by 10 times simply because it feels a little bit more alive. For example, the Battle Bit game. <laughs> charge, boys! Fucking charge! No, don't do it to me! Oh, you already know we're gonna do it to you, sir. Get him on the bed, boys. Oh, boy! I'm coming to join. <laughs> I am a family! <laughs> oh shit! Watch out, man! Oh my god! <laughs> Bro, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's a Roblox game, a battlefield that became so popular, it became a standalone game. All I've heard from fans of the franchise is how this game is putting the real modern Battlefield games to shame. There's so many people doing the most random things and sometimes just out here role-playing so incredibly hard that it's fun. It gives me brief moments of exactly what I am looking for in an online game. Get me out of here. I don't want to fight this war anymore, man. I fucking hate this man. Matt, you're going to die, Matt. You're going to do it, mate. But a game can't solely rely on only social mechanics. It still has to be satisfying and be somewhat addicting like most games push for nowadays. The gameplay loop is always the biggest priority because it's what's interesting for players to play their game in the first place. But to keep them around, to keep them engaged in the game and in the community. Developers should utilize the people of the game and get them connecting in any way they can. This would be through social mechanics like the proximity chat. <laughs> but there needs to be more. Usually the game is either lacking in the gameplay or the social experience. We rarely get both to where it feels like it's complete. I often see the smaller game projects do best in the social categories such as Among Us, Battlebit, Phasmophobia. Where? <laughs> is that screaming? While the bigger companies and games often do best in the addicting gameplay. There are a few games out there that I believe deliver both addicting gameplay and social experiences on a sufficient level. Games such as Escape from Tarkov and Rust. The problem with games such as those though, is that they are quite difficult and hard to just pick up and play. But now imagine that you did have a game that was dedicated to the experience of both social fun and a satisfying gameplay loop. More than just proximity chat, have it all. Be able to blend gameplay with social interaction. This is where I raised the golden child that did start doing a lot of this. There, there is no ah! The Halo franchise. The one that made a drastic cultural impact turning some ordinary people into gamers for the very first time. The fuck is your real name, Peter? <laughs> I know it's been a while since this game has been in the spotlight and people forget. But the reason why Halo was one of the best games to ever live was because not only was it innovating gameplay, but it was able to combine that with the power of community. People were talking with each other in-game as usual, but they were communicating and often led themselves to experiment with the game's mechanics outside intended use. They would create silly moments that were unexpected and produce some hilarious stuff. To top it off, they could instantly go back and watch it over and over again to then possibly make it one of the most beloved clips of all time. 
This clip, for example, went down in Halo history as one of the most popular ones. But it also has a sad story behind it and now lives on as a great memory of what people were able to do together. And that's what I believe made games fulfilling, memorable, and addicting. Games are better with people. They always have been. Any specific moment that you enjoyed in a video game would almost always be bettered if shared with the right people. But as the years went on, we've seen less freedom given to the community to make their own mark on the game within the game. Now it's more relied on outside use, mainly from the media such as TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, and so on. You could just be on the game and go experience all that yourself with the reactions from everyone else. Now it seems a lot of bigger studios are scared of the consequences of giving such freedom. Everything has to be kept silenced in order to play it safe. There are games that have microphones off by default, games where you can't stay in the same lobby as the one you played in previously, and games with tools taken away from you that let out your creative side. Where's the fun in any of those decisions? But the decline of being social in video games isn't just all on the developers. The landscape of gaming has changed too. People get more comfortable in party chats or discord calls, too lazy to even attempt with game chat. When you do that, everything becomes more closed off, little to no opportunity for anything new to happen because you're doing the exact same thing with the exact same people. I don't expect everyone to become friends with everyone they meet. But you can stumble upon some really interesting people that make the experience different. Take this game back to Blockbuster and quit running up your mama's account, you bitch made ass motherfucker. Maybe they'll lead you to a lobby with something new to await you. People are getting creative and using the tools at their disposal to create nights that may go down in history for you. Years later down the road, you may just remember that night and how special it was. That's when a game becomes memorable because of the things it let you do and now it made memories. But games just don't do that as often anymore. Some only provide scraps of what we used to have. Feels a lot more isolated out there. And there are several ways to bring this back. I know Call of Duty used to force people to come to game chat for one of their game modes. Discord is owned now by Microsoft. They could easily implement ways to force people to talk in game rather than sit in a call. And games need to let people have their mics on by default. If it's a setting that you have to go activate, then the average person may never go turn that on. I believe games should focus on building around the community. A game like Among Us essentially forces you to play the game with your microphone because it'll play like crap otherwise. The same thing with something like the role playing in GTA. It encourages you to use your microphone or otherwise it would be boring from the start. If the average gamer doesn't even have a mic, then we need to revert to something like consoles coming packaged with at least a cheap headset. And the great thing about all those ideas is that if you're comfortable gaming how you are, you always have the option to turn off those default settings or avoid game modes and continue doing your own thing. But giving a game the opportunity to breathe, where you can just relax with people, I think would reignite a fire in a lot of online games. What do you think?